Hello and welcome to our May virtual opening. My name is Emma Wilson and we're delighted that you could join us. This month's feature artists are Jody Edwards, Willa Venema, Nina Fuller, and Paige Eastburn O'Rourke. You'll hear more from them in a few minutes. So it's May in Maine and I was driving the other evening and I noticed it was 7.15 and it was still light out. That's a really exciting moment in time here. Uh, we are cruising into summer after a slightly brutal uh, run of some winter storms in April. So if you're in the area, please, please stop in and come on over, come on up and visit us. All right, let's dive in. I'd like to introduce artist Jody Edwards. Jody is an abstract painter who lives in Maine. She loves color and responds to what she is feeling and currently what is happening in her life. Music inspires and influences her work and is as much a part of the paintings as the paint. She is a self-described conduit. The music is the muse, and when she's working, the paint flows through her easily and effortlessly. Jody was born in, into a very artistic family in Syracuse, New York, and throughout her childhood, she was given carte blanche for any art supplies she wanted. Creativity was encouraged and valued in her family. Her education and background in art is richly diverse. Jody graduated from the New School for Social Research in New York City in 1984 with a degree in liberal arts. And at that time, it was attached to Parsons School of Design. Please welcome artist Jody Edwards. Thank you everyone for tuning in and listening to watching this video. And thank you to the Portland Art Gallery and everyone who works behind the scenes there and in front of the scenes there. It's such a wonderful space to, to be a part of. I'm so proud to be in my 10th year of exhibiting at uh, the beautiful Portland Art Gallery. It's a dream come true to be sharing my work in such a beautiful space there. I really, really appreciate it. I'm also so excited to be showing with Willa Venema, Paige Eastburn O'Rourke, and Nina Fuller. So I always start a series of paintings with a color scheme and with music. <clears throat> color is always the basis of my work and my life actually, <laughs> my whole life. I actually curate everything in my life from the teapot on the stove to the um, furniture I have. Everything is just very colorful and um, aesthetically pleasing to me. Uh, so, my, so music is my palette and um, I go upstairs, my studio is upstairs and I crank up the tunes and I start painting and the magic just starts to happen up there, but it doesn't always happen, you know, right away. Um, and even though I, most of my work is abstract, if, you know, some, sometimes it looks like you just, I just throw the paint on there and it works. In fact, the painting behind me was one of the very first paintings I ever did when I started painting, um, 10 years ago. And that, that painting actually worked pretty well like that, but, but uh, most of my other work, it, it takes a while for it to get to look the way I would like it to. And there's a painting in this show titled In the Blink of an Eye. And it's, there's a splotch in the middle of this painting and it looks like I just threw the paint on there and it's worked fine, but I actually had to do that splotch over seven times <laughs> so just i you know i really carefully i want everything to look just i can't explain it because i want it to look like it's just thrown up there but it sometimes it takes a while for it to, to actually look that way well i'm very grateful to be living my dream painting and showing in the beautiful Portland Art Gallery, and I really thank you for, for watching this, and I hope you enjoy the show. Now I'd like to introduce artist Willa Venema. Willa works in the encaustic medium to create luminous, multi-layered works made from a molten mixture of beeswax, Dalmar crystals, pigments, and found materials. Her inspiration comes for both the magnificent beauty of the Maine coast and the process and materials she uses in the, in the encaustic paintings. This show includes multiple works from her Island and Ocean series, inspired by her deep connection with Swans Island and the mid coast of Maine. Please welcome artist Willa Venema. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today to hear the artist remarks for the May exhibition, 
2024 at Portland Art Gallery. And thank you, Emma, so much for the nice introduction. And a big, big, big thank you to the staff at Portland Art Gallery who make everything possible and keep the gallery running so smoothly and make it such a wonderful place for artists to show their work. So I'm gonna to start today by talking about where my inspiration for my work comes from. And it comes from an island up the coast off uh, where Acadia National Park is located, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Uh, you take a boat, you ferry boat out of Bass Harbor and you get to Swans Island in about a half an hour. Uh, and I've been going there my whole life with my family my, when I was a kid, and now I've done that with my family, and they're all grown up too. But uh, we love spending time up there. The natural beauty of, the, of that area is just unprecedented. It's, it never ceases to amaze me, and I continually get my inspiration from there. Uh, the rocks, the oceans, the islands, the, the sun sparkle on the water. It's all just feeds my soul. So I spend my summers up there and then I come back to Portland where I have my home studio and I try to distill and gather the information from my mind's eye, all the things I've seen over the summer. And uh, I make paintings. Um, so the works in the show are all from a series I've been working on for a number of years now called Islands and Ocean. And there tends to be one, two, or three islands in the paintings. And over the years, I've come to realize that the islands are starting to symbolize certain things for me. So for instance, if I paint one island, it symbolizes fortitude or strength or independence. If I paint two islands, it tends to symbolize balance within the picture plane as well as life or companionship. And three islands, we're starting to go towards family and community. So I definitely have uh, made the islands into my own little idea of of life. So um, the paintings in the show are all from that series, Islands and Oceans, and uh, they all have a variety of different ways of looking at the islands. And hopefully, uh, if you can't get to see the show this month, you'll be able to go online on the walkthrough that's right online. It's at the top of the page. You can click walkthrough, and that will take you to see the show virtually and it's really a fun tool to use so you can try that. So I just want to close with telling you a little bit about the medium I use because that's a big part of my process is working with encaustic which is a wax based medium and it is mixed with some Demar uh, resin to make it a little bit harder and pigments and you have to keep it warmed and liquefied on a hot plate as you're working. And it's very exciting because it's got a mind of its own. It's a wax. So the minute you take your brush off the palette, the wax starts to harden. So you have to work very quickly to lay down your layers of paint. And then you have to, in the reverse, slow down. After you've made a layer, you have to slow down and slowly warm it with a heat torch or a, a heat gun so it adheres to the layer below it. And layering is a big part of encaustic work. It's how you get that luminous quality that you'll notice when you look closely at a painting. So I always want my, my viewers to get up close to my work and really engage in it because it's a very sensory experience. You might get a whiff of the beeswax. You can look at the surface of the painting, whether it's textured or very smooth, and you can delve deep into the layers and try to imagine what's below and how it all came about. Uh, for me, I, I tend to enjoy that layering process and I experiment a lot with using different things to create different effects. For instance, I've used a bait bag, which I embed in the wax and pull up 
then fill in the lines left behind and to get a certain pattern and to remind me of the ocean and where, where all my paintings come from. So feel free if you're in the gallery to go up and touch my paintings. It's okay to do that. And you can tell the staff I've been giving you permission um, because they definitely invite touching and engaging with. So I think that's all I'm gonna say today. And uh, I hope you get to see the May show and anyone's coming after it and uh, take care. And thank you so much for tuning in. Now I'd like to introduce artist Nina Fuller. Nina's formal education includes an AFA in printmaking from Silvermine College of Art in New Canaan, Connecticut, a BA in fine art from George Washington University, and a master's in counseling psychology with a concentration in equine assisted mental health and photography therapy from Prescott College. Nina has had the honor of photographing our presidents and first ladies, including both of the Bushes, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Michelle and Barack Obama, and her commercial clients include L.L. Bean, Land's End, Johnny's Selected Seeds, Friendlies, and many, many more. Fast forward to now, and Nina works in a carriage house studio at her sheep farm in Hollis, Maine. She photographs important events for families and supports her commercial clientele and captures beauty and irony, wherever she is with that camera. But in this series, she focuses on key members of her beloved sheep family, Will, Sarah, Julia, Dodgy, to name a few. She brings their personalities to life with an exquisite detail and emotion. Please welcome artist Nina Fuller. Hi, thank you, Emma, for that introduction. I'm Nina Fuller and I'm a photographer and these are all my photographs. And as you can see, they are all of sheep. I have been a photographer since I was a kid and professionally since my twenties. So I've, I've been through many different stages in my work. For the last 13 years, I've raised sheep. So I'm out in the barn every day and Seeing as I'm a photographer, I started photographing the sheep and it has turned into this. I hope that when a viewer looks at my work, they get the same sense of peace that I do. That's what I like to feel and I like to have you feel. And also most importantly, I would like my photographs to give people a sense that everything is going to be okay. They're timeless. And that's that. Thank you for coming. Bye. Now I'd like to introduce artist Paige Eastburn O'Rourke. I'll let Paige tell you the story of how she moved into her most recent direction of abstraction. She does a, such a good job at it. But I will say it starts with a sentence. It started on a trip to Paris, and we all know there's going to be a good story to follow if it starts with that sentence. Paige delighted collectors and visitors with folk art interpretations of key landmarks in Maine for many years. She has taken this love of Maine and has learned a new language, a new way to share with us her love of Maine's beauty, her life's complexities, and setting yourself free in the direction that you want to go. Please welcome artist Paige Eastburn O'Rourke. Welcome everyone to this virtual opening. Thank you to Portland Art Gallery. I've been represented by the gallery for four years now, and I'm so appreciative of the ways they pushed me to grow as an artist in person, and have been deeply supportive of my growth. Thank you to my encouraging community of friends, collectors, and family. I'm excited to be showing with Nina, Willa, and Jody, and debuting my new abstract paintings. I have 18 new pieces. They're energetic, bold, colorful, and full of stories from my life, long ago, as well as recent. It's been a big year of change for my artistic style. And while my work is different on one hand, it feels similar on the other. When I was creating my Maine landscapes, I'd travel around Maine and look for a scene I connect with, want to capture, and paint. And now I'm traveling through my life, connecting with memories I want to paint. It came about on a trip I took to Paris with my sister Brooke and niece Eva last June. I had a lightning bolt moment of inspiration. We were walking on the left bank, deciding on a cafe for lunch, and my sister pointed to a window filled with gorgeous colorful fabrics bursting with abstract shapes. 
I knew in that moment I wanted to learn the language of the abstraction to recreate those powerful feelings. This past fall, I took a challenging class that helped push me forward, abstracting the landscape with a teacher online in Scotland who challenged us with assignments like attaching charcoal taped to a long stick and drawing landscapes. The assignments pushed me out of my comfort zone and helped loosen me up. It was a struggle to let go and freeing at the same time. I began deconstructing my main landscape paintings, truly breaking them down to their essence of shapes, colors, and patterns. I have so many wonderful memories of my travels around Maine sketching, and more memories from my entire life started to come up. I have a routine where I begin the day with a guided meditation, and now I've included my sketchbook. I've been creating paintings from those sketches. Lately, I've put together a compilation of all my favorite songs over the last 40 years of my life that helps put me in touch with the emotions and feelings I'm trying to represent while I paint. The music connects me to my rich experiences and telling my own story. The playlist runs the gamut from Fleetwood Mac to Jay-Z. Turning 60, I was gobsmacked. I never cared much about age and I didn't see this coming. I lost people I love so much. I became aware of the clock ticking and I began looking back over my life. It created inner turmoil and I got in this loop of replaying regrets. Now that I've been painting my memories as abstract paintings, I feel like the regrets are dissipating as all these rich memories, stories, and feelings are surfacing and I'm exploring and bringing them to life through my art. I have to remind myself to trust the process. It's been my art, my creativity that's helping me to say what I've been searching to express. Abstract art has given me an active way of creating my world and understanding and celebrating my life. Feelings are universal, and I'm curious to know what memories my abstracts bring up for you and how you connect with them. Please check them out online or stop by Portland Art Gallery the month of May for the show. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for our May virtual opening. If you're in town, please stop and see us at 154 Middle Street, right in the heart of the Old Port. We are open seven days a week, 10 to 530. Follow us on Instagram at Portland Art Gallery. Subscribe to our newsletter at www.portlandartgallery.com. And please tune in to our YouTube station, Radio Maine with Dr. Lisa Belial, where Dr. Lisa has interesting conversations with artists and members of our creative community. So until next time, be kind, stay curious, and keep in touch. Thank you.